What's going on, Garage Gang? Matt from Garage MC here. Guys, this is day three, video three of the video a day build on the ATC 350X 1985. Let's get right on into it because you guys showed up a little bit late and I'm already halfway done with some stuff. So let's get it. I started a little bit earlier this morning. Um, got a few things taken care of, sandblasted. I have the rear hubs in the powder coat oven now. What I would like to get done in this video, and this is just the goal, uh, apparently, you know, setting goals in the morning, you, you might not make all the way and get done what you're trying to get done, but, so I want to do the rear hubs, those are in the oven baking right now, we got to do the front hub, we'll do that together, I got a rebuild kit for it, new bearings and everything, I already cleaned up all the other hardware, uh, the rotor, I went ahead and masked that off and redid the silver on the center, so that's taken care of on both sides. Even the side that you don't see. Um, what else we got? And I'd like to do the swing arm. And I'd also like to start getting that rear shock uh, disassembled, vapor blasted, cleaned up. I want to clean all these rings, the lower cup, the lock plate. The spring has to get powder coated. Uh, a Ford blue, I'm going to do it, which is, I think, the closest color I have. I have Illusion Blueberry as well, but I want the spring to be shiny, kind of like factory-ish, you know. You guys haven't been paying attention, this is a 1985 Honda ATC 350X that we bought a few months ago. Um, check out the Will It Run video on this, man. You guys can see what this bike looked like when it came in, but it's going to be pretty sick. Also, we ran into a little bit of an issue. I powder-coated the wheels. These right here, well, we need three. So, one, two, um, oh yeah. So, I sandblasted this, I had powder coat on it already, and I was going to put it in the oven. Now, whoever owned these wheels or whatever machine they came off of that I bought, uh, this thing was full of tire slime. So, we've got an issue here, and I don't have another rear Honda wheel with a junk tire on it that I could go steal and redo. The tire slime literally corroded the wheel, and it ate pinholes into it. A couple of these go all the way through. So, tire slime, no, no, no. Look, it's all over this thing. It's like it's got cancer right there, really bad. This sucks, because we're running out of time here. I, 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 If I'm being honest, I don't think this whole bike's going to be 100% by the end of the month, man. I, I just don't think it's going to happen. There's going to be something that I'm going to run into that I don't have, or I can't find, or can't fix, or something like that. Kind of like I can't find the rear rotor hub and rotor. So I damn sure hope a 400X one works because I like to run this Lone Star Anti-Fade. Uh, I don't want to, but that's what I have right now. Um, I, I'll find the rotor hub and rotor, but uh, I, as long as the diameter of it is the same, I know the splines will work on our 300X uh, conversion swap with the axle, so I already know that'll work. It's where it's going to set the rotor and the diameter of the rotor is what's going to come into play. So I did find a old school rotor and hub that might be from this bike. I'm not 100% sure. I have so many bikes torn down. Like You guys see a lot of bikes, but you guys haven't even seen half of what we have. It gets, it's out of control. It's out of control. But when these come out of the oven and I went black chrome on these, so, you know, like a, a twist of the factory colors. They're supposed to be like a dark gray. Um, the swing arm is also an item that is only, it's going to be one and only thing that's going to go that metallic silver. So that and the spring are the only things that go one color. So it's not like I could run a whole batch of that color out real quick. Kind of like we did with the chrome. Um, I have the same color that I'm doing the, the frame coming. And I also have another set of motor mounts. So these are my shittier set of motor mounts, but just in case I don't have the powder in time, we're going to run these and then the better mounts that I have are down there. I will do those the color of the frame. When I go pick up the frame, they're going to give me a half pound of the same color uh, powder coat. So we'll have two sets and then, you know, if I swap them out, I could sell these online. I did the rear seat latch and brushed, brushed aluminum powder coat. The rear brake um, linkage arm is done. Here's the other motor mount. This one's pretty somewhat decent. Um, and I also did the oil line 
to the cylinder head. So you guys can, this thing came out sick, man. It almost looks like it's chromed. It, it almost looks like it's chromed. So where this goes is, I'll show you guys. You can see the one on there now, which, <laughs> yeah, you guessed it. I also have to make this thing look like a piece of jewelry before the end of the month also. This is the engine from the Will It Run. This is the one that ran. Uh, and I also have another engine. So basically with this, just because of time restraints, and this, this engine runs good. Uh, I'll go over it and, you know, make sure the valves are at the right clearance and everything. The timing spot on. And it's going to run great. It's a Honda. Um, I have the other engine as well. So if this bike doesn't sell right away, uh, I will build the other 350X engine from you know top to bottom all brand new everything so but this goes right here on this this line here they're supposed to be black on the bike but i'm doing a stain polished stainless steel bolt kit on the engine um and when i take all these oem bolts out i will put all these oem bolts back in the packaging for the stainless steel bolt kit and i'll have these all re-zinked because a lot of these you can't get anymore some you can some you can't um the one head nut is still in really nice shape and i have another one that's in nice shape so that'll match and be shiny as well we got a new spark plug uh, i had the other set i was vapor blasting they were all chewed up so i went and took a set off that 91 250x i have here they're like literally mint but somebody spray painted them black so those will get vapor blasted and uh that's the plan. So it'll be a runner, obviously. This oil is this oil uh, cooler here. The bracket's a little bent. Yeah, I could straighten it out, but I have another one over here. So yeah, still gotta dig through all that stuff and make a pile. I'd also like to build out the front headlight assembly and get that done today. And I still haven't built my front other fork tube, so you know, we, we got the brake caliper to rebuild. I got a full rebuild kit for that. That's got to get completely stripped and powder coated. And, uh, yeah, that's where we're at. So I'm going to start prepping up, and then we'll pick up when we start to do this front hub. I am soaked in sweat. Let me, let me get the thumbs up, guys. This is a lot of work, filming a video every day, doing all this work by myself, going in at night, eating dinner, and then editing the whole video, you know, the same night and a little bit the next morning and having everything ready and then just doing it all over again the next day all by myself so just so you guys can see what this black chrome looks like like i said man a, a twist of the factory colors that's gonna look pretty damn cool it's a little bright uh outside so i mean you guys will see it better when we get them in on the bench so I ordered all new wheel studs, but they are not, I repeat, not going to be here in time. Uh, maybe they will be, but uh, just so we can keep moving. Yes, I went ahead and taped off every single wheel stud for the lug nuts and powder coated them the polished aluminum powder. So you know it's gonna look pretty damn sick and if you're wondering who the hell is retarded enough to sit there and do that me i i am thank you we are all taped up and this was no easy task to get this thing taped off but just protected where the bearing is going to go here the other side is completely encapsulated and studs are taped off uh I tried to order new studs for that. You cannot get those three studs brand new. They do sell the nuts that go on it, though. So I got my... I don't worry about plugging off where the studs go, but I do put the silicone in from the side that it's going to get pushed in from. This way, any excess will just... You know, too much isn't going to go in there anyway. It's like when you put a negative charge to this, really tight spaces like that kind of deflect the powder anyway. So it kind of like masks itself if you do it properly. Uh, not saying that I know everything about powder coating, but so here we are, I'm gonna powder coat this and then when it cools off, we will pick up and start putting this piece together. And you know, knock this one off the list at least. All right, she just went in the oven. You can see it looks black and like flat black at first. And then it turns into 
you guys can see this a little better these are just cooling off right now they are still super hot but it's gonna be a good looking color on there so imagine that with the polished aluminum studs on the back it's not gonna look like it was just taped off and spray painted you know kind of like what we did on the 200x if you guys didn't check out the spray paint restoration on the 200x part one and two is out part three will be finishing it up uh, i've been hammering away on that a little bit in between like wait times with this she's sitting out there ready for her time to shine just waiting uh i, I don't know what i'm gonna do about this rear wheel guys i really don't um i guess i could have my buddy come out and we could try and weld it or I could just powder coat it and then JB weld it from the inside, but um, I do have an extra set of brand new bead locks with a black ring, but I, I I don't know. I gotta pull them out and see if like the the polished aluminum on those looks just like the polished aluminum on the front wheel. Plus, if I use the bead locks, I could take the tires back off myself right at the house and you know swap them out to another honda wheel i have other wheels but they're all suzuki wheels if you guys don't know what the difference is the lug pattern is the same but the shape in there is not the same see how it kind of looks like a four leaf clover shape well the suzuki's got like a more of a sharp look to it you can see lug pattern's the same they will fit actually the 200x has suzuki wheels on the back so I guess the uh, polished aluminum beadlock wheels would look okay for now. I, I might have to resort to that. Um, I have other Honda wheels, but they have really good tires on them still. So <sighs> just unexpected shit, man. I, I wouldn't have known that that wheel had holes in it until it was sandblasted. You know, that's like one of them things. If I didn't do that work and you put a nice set of tires on it, that's one of them things where you'd come down from a jump or something or uh, the pressure in the wheel would get increased a lot like very fast like a shock and it would just blow all those holes right out so it is what it is i guess but anyway let's keep doing what we can control and get as much of this other stuff done we'll pick back up when that comes out and cools off and we'll put the new bearings and everything in it we are fresh out of the powder coat it is cooled off enough to handle uh, i want to try and push the bearings in while this is still warm they're not like a super tight fit, but it will definitely help. Um, I got to get these studs pressed in. This is what they look like with the polished aluminum powder coated studs on the black chrome hubs. New lug nuts. And these came from something that looked just like that crappy hub. These actually looked worse than that. Um, and if you're wondering what it looks like on the wheel... Cause I know I was wondering, hence the reason it's assembled like this. I'm gonna look friggin' sick. I really hope I can get another wheel or get that one repaired because I really wanna run OEM. Well, at least OEM Honda wheels. They're not OEM 350X wheels. I'm well aware that these are not original 350X wheels, but you know, it's good enough. So. All right, I'm going to press the studs in off camera, and then I'll set you guys up on the tripod, and we'll put the bearings and everything in. I gotta clean the inner sleeve. It's clean on the outside. Clean on the outside. Clean. Oh, yep. Yeah, that just happened. I gotta clean the inside of the uh, spacer that goes in there. You put one bearing in first, then the spacer, then you press the other one in, and yada, 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 seals. Um, the bearing replacement kit, I went with all balls. And uh, it is, I don't know which one of these part numbers they use, man, but here you go. You guys can read them if you're so inclined or needing a bearing replacement kit. That's what they fit. So, all right. You get two bearings and two seals. And that's it. I think it was like uh, 22 bucks or 25 bucks, something like that. All right, press these in, and then I'll set you guys up, and we'll assemble this and put the rotor on with the new rotor nuts alrighty we are ready to put the bearings in so I put the first side in bearing obviously a little anti-seize in there and then I packed the grease in the lip a lot of people don't do that but I like to take a flathead screwdriver and I'll basically just go around the whole perimeter of it and just pack it in there yeah the bearings are sealed but you know 
I'm not a fan of putting stuff in dry, you know. Just not a fan. So I will go ahead and pack this full of grease, off camera obviously, but that's what I do. I just use a junk flathead. And I'm using Maxima waterproof grease. That's my grease of choice. So <clears throat> what we'll do is, this is all clean, obviously. Now that the other bearing is in the other side, this is all nice and clean. This is the spacer that goes in between all these. That just sits in there like a so. And then you take a little anti-seize. And we'll just do a nice coating around here where the bearing slides into. One, it's going to lubricate it. Two, it's going to help it not get seized in there for the next time, which won't be me taking it out. But who knows? Who knows? So this is a bearing uh, race and installation tool. This is not the bolt that comes with it. It comes with this bolt, which would normally hold this on and, you know, it's going to slide off. But I, I use the bolt in there just to keep it centered. So put that just like that. I have a light ball peen hammer and we're going to get it started. I can see that the back side over here is a little higher. So we're going to slide this to that side just a little bit that it allows us and if you do not have one of these tools guys get a socket that is the size of the outer race so don't push on the center don't push on the seal just push push on the outer race but you want it slightly smaller than the od outer diameter of this bearing because you don't want to press your socket into here either or be too large and you expand and crack your hub Good luck buying one of these online. The hub, I mean. <laughs> Prices people are asking for some of these parts is out of this world. And we're just going to double check. Now, what's good about this bolt being longer on there, it's keeping our spacer going in the right direction here. Which, I mean, it doesn't really have much option to get out of whack and off center but and just like that we're in all right let me pack this with grease and we will push this in as well so here we are packed i mean you know you don't have to get pretty with it just it is what it is and then any of the excess i just wipe around the lip of the seal and when you're putting seals in, you'll notice one side has writing on it and the other side has like the indentation where we put the grease and you'll see a spring in there. That spring is what keeps the tension on the inner diameter of this for whatever it's going on. In this case, the front axle of the trike. So you want the lettering facing out in 99 out of 100 cases. And we're going to use our same tool that we just used to push the bearing in. To push our seal in you want that to go in nice and smooth you don't want it to get you know cockeyed or anything and most of the time as long as you have it even with the outer edge even if you go a little bit past it's not a huge deal but just like that man we, we got a rebuilt front hub so what else can we do here well we could take the rotor that I painted and you guys can see all them nice studs in there, man. It looks sick, bro. That thing came out very nice, in my opinion. Came out very nice. Some of you might be like, ah, oh, that looks like trash. Um, go F yourself. Go watch Two Vintages channel. All right, let me get the rotor out. I'm just kidding, guys. I don't have anything against Two Vintage. I know a lot of you guys uh, <laughs> um, really defend that guy in the comments I, I have learned to appreciate two vintage and i'm gonna tell you why i'm gonna tell you why right now so i got a bike the other day not gonna tell you what it is yet and uh previous owner couldn't get it working so we were conversating and he's like yeah i was watching two vintages videos trying to figure out what to do with this and i just couldn't get it and so that being said i i really I've grown to appreciate him now because I'm sure I'll be getting more bikes that people thought they could fix but couldn't, you know. But do I have anything against him personally? No. For any of you guys that are going to defend him in the comments and say he's the best thing since sliced bread. And uh, like I said, I have nothing against him. He's doing very well on YouTube. 
you know, but very good job. I think he's got like, uh, I don't know, half a million subscribers or something. That's, that's pretty damn good in YouTube, YouTube world. But anyway, all right, enough with that. I would like to see him do an actual build on something, though. I think that would be, uh, it would definitely be interesting. But, you know, I would like to see that, other than just uh, putting top ends on stuff and throwing parts at shit. Anyway, all right, so here's our rotor. This goes on the left side of the bike on the 350X. It's got a directional here, um, so that's going to just go plop right down there like that. Now let me get out our brand new Honda nuts for those studs. All right, so brand new OEM nuts. These nuts are OEM. I'll give you guys a part number. It's just these three locking nuts right here. Here's your part number, 90309-428-731, just in case you were wondering and just so happened to need these nuts. Get all these out of the package here. And my nothing like some fresh hardware, bro. Nothing like it. I'm just gonna sink these down by hand, just like this right here. And that's it, man. So being this part of the video of the day took so long, just doing the hubs, which you know, just how it goes. Just how it goes. But uh, I'm going to set up everything for a thumbnail and we'll move on to day four which I'll start prepping for today all right man so that's day three day three of the 350x video a day build might have bit off more than I could chew on this one fellas honestly but anyway all right so what do we get done we got the hubs done today um, so there's the one we got the front uh, yesterday we did the wheels and I got to figure out what I'm doing about the third one. Day one, we got the front end done, the skid plate, the other fork tube. Um, and we're moving right along. <clears throat> There's so many more parts. I got a ton of bolts and nuts that I just got to restore and clean up. Vapor blast, sand blast. Uh, try to figure out how to powder coat the head of the bolt. This way I could, you know, because some of these bolts you just can't get, man. Um, what else did I do today? While I had the black chrome in the gun, I did all the all the brake line clamps for the front brake line. This is the clamp for the upper part. Might not be using that because we're doing a blue streamline brake brake line anyway on front and rear. And we got the lever and pedal for the rear brake system. Uh, I got the uh, the part that connects it to two clevises and the um, rod where you can shorten or lengthen where your pedal goes on the bench I gotta clean that up it's just like all that little tiny stuff man that you'd like if I didn't point it out you wouldn't even know because it just blends in with the bike but what are you gonna do uh, gonna do the uh, I'm gonna disassemble the front brake caliper and do that off camera you guys have seen me rebuild a brake caliper before so that'll speed that up being that I don't have to turn the camera on um, so Day four, I was trying to do the swing arm and the rear shock in today's video, but it's not going to happen. Uh, so I'm going to call this video good. Thank you guys for joining me in the garage, and I'll see you guys in build day four on the 350X video a day build. Damn, that's a mouthful. I should have picked a better name for that. But anyway, thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.